we're going to be discussing annihilation. This is a fascinating process and I've got a little example of it right here on my board. We've got an electron, which is ordinary matter, which meets a positron, which is antimatter. Now remember, when antimatter and matter meet up, you get annihilation. That means that all of those, that mass of those two particles gets converted to energy. And we can calculate that amount. All we need to do is use delta E is equal to delta mc squared. So we can see over here this worked example already. Uh, what we're going to use for the mass is twice the electron mass. Remember, the electron mass is 9.11 times 10 to the power of minus 31. So our delta m is going to be this quantity over here, which is twice the electron mass because a electron has exactly the same mass as the pro positron and then we're going to multiply that by the speed of light squared which is 3 times 10 to the 8 squared when we input those numbers into a scientific calculator we get about 1.6398 times 10 to the power of minus 13 joules now notice over here I've converted that to electron volts 1.02 times 10 to the 6 electron volts, and I've also converted that to mega electron volts. This is quite a common number that uh, you tend to, to see quite, quite a lot, uh, particularly if it is to do with conservation of momentum. If it was just only one photon that was produced, the amount of energy after the collision will will not the amount of momentum after the collision will be in one direction but if we look at the momentum before the interaction in total that's zero okay um, so that's how many mega electron volts and that's how many joules of energy we get and remember each one of those photons is going to have half of that energy so if we divide this number by half, we're going to get about 8.2 times 10 to the power of minus 14 joules for each of those photons. So this one is going to have 8.2 times 10 to the power of minus 14 joules. And this one here is also going to have 8.2 times 10 to the power of minus 14 joules as well. Perfect. Knowing that energy, we can also calculate frequency of that photon. You can also calculate the wavelength of that photon should we wish to. Let's do the frequency. So all we need to do is E is equal to HF. Then what we're going to do is just rearrange for the frequency. So the frequency will just be uh, our energy E divided by Planck's constant. The energy of a single photon is 8.2 times 10 to the power of minus 14. Dividing by Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34. We're going to get a very large frequency, and that will be about 1.24 times 10 to the 20 hertz. Perfect. So this is the frequency of those photons that are going to emerge out of this interaction. Okay guys, let's just quickly recap. Uh, in this episode, we talked about annihilation. We had an electron uh, meeting a positron, a particle meeting its antiparticle. This whole process produces energy because of delta E is equal to delta mc squared, or more accurately said, the mass gets converted to pure energy in, in the form of photons. There are two of them due to conservation of momentum. If we calculate delta E, we're going to get that delta E is 1.02 mega electron volts. And what we've done then is we've subbed in this amount of energy into the photon energy equation over here e is equal to HF. We've rearranged for the frequency and we've got an answer of 1.24 times 10 to the 20 hertz. Excellent. Hopefully if you've enjoyed this and you've learned something useful. Thank you very much for watching and remember to subscribe please.